Yes, I know. That would have really bothered me had they not been the same. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Thank you so much again.
Oh my, oh my, what a great start. I think we could just end now. <laughs> Weren't you just searching for sermon topics? Oh, but all these people have practiced a lot and Mark's put a lot together, so we're gonna continue on. But welcome, I'm honored, I'm Doug Miller, I'm honored to welcome you here today on Easter Sunday. What a wonderful time, what a wonderful day. Uh, you know, the kids, no sunshine, we had it right there and all these kids on the stage, right? <laughs> So anyway, um, if you're a visitor with us here today, welcome. We've got a little gift for you outside here in the warm room. After service, stop by and pick it up. And there's information about the church. Uh, we're certainly welcome uh, to have you here. For folks watching online and visitors online, we certainly welcome you as well. And uh, there is information about the church at fbcpeoria.org.org. So please uh, take a look out there. Um, not much in the way of announcements. They're on the back of the bulletin, so I'm not going to go through those today. But um, we do have a moment of sadness. Uh, we learned this week that um, Butch Vickerman, Leon Vickerman, we often call him Butch, has passed away this week, and so we want to keep Karen uh, and the stepkids in prayers and thoughts this week. And I'm not sure of what the details are for services, but uh, stay tuned for that, but uh, certainly keep that family in your prayers. And also these wonderful, beautiful geraniums that many of you uh, offered up in honor of uh, family members and others uh, after the service. You're welcome to pick those up. It's my understanding that it might be still a little too cool to plant those, so keep them inside and keep them watered, but uh, I think that's the uh, marching orders I had. <laughs> but with that, again, we're super pleased you're here with us, worshiping with us today, and let's continue now with our service. Please stand for our Easter greeting. Oh, yeah. that's right. I've got another job to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, in your bulletin, you'll see the printing for the Easter greeting. Thanks, Mark. Uh, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Now is Christ risen from the dead. The first fruits of those who have died. Come, let us worship the risen Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Loving Lord, today we remember the veil of darkness transforming to the brightest light, the most dreadful end becoming the most beautiful beginning, the depths of despair fading to reveal hope everlasting, the curse of death defeated by eternal life, thus completing the transformation of heaven and earth. Today we remember with thankfulness your willingness to be pierced for our sins. We sing with abounding joy of your miraculous rise from the death's tomb to resplendent life. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of heaven and your generous invitation of eternal life for all. And now let us pray in the words your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. Seeing that the stone had been moved away, Mary ran off to Simon and Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He did not enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the wrappings lying on the, the ground. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the wrappings on the ground, and also the linen cloth that had covered the head, not lying with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. Remember, as yet they did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Then, still weeping, she stooped to look inside and saw two angels in dazzling robes where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said, woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She had no sooner said this than she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there but she did not recognize him. Jesus asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you are the one who carried him off, tell me where you have laid him, and I will go and take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus then said to her, do not cling to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Rather, go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. So Mary of Magdala 
went to the disciples. I have seen the Lord, she announced. And then she reported what he had said to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing together forever. Please stand.
At this time, I'll invite our ushers to come forward to take up our weekly offering.
Let us pray. God of the prophets, you herald the coming of the Son of Man by wondrous signs in the heavens and on the earth. Guard our hearts from despair so that we might truly give from within ourselves. Upon this offering, we ask your blessing that with it, our hearts would turn back to you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church, and happy Easter, everyone. It's good to see you. I had a, a mysterious hollow chocolate Easter bunny sitting on the pulpit when I got in today. It had a note that said, keep it short or else. <laughs> Don't laugh so hard. I made that part up. Goodness <laughs> gracious. My name's Rob Collins. I'm the pastor here, and, and I'm glad that you were able to be with us for worship on this Easter Sunday. And it is a, a fun day filled with resurrection stories and life and love and, and probably a little too much chocolate if there is such a thing. 
Our pastoral reading comes from the letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11, Paul writing to them about the message that he has given to those who would listen, and it says this. Now I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, the good news that I have been preaching to you, which you in turn have received in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve, and to the other followers, and he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive to this day. Then he appeared to James, and all to the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, to Paul. Even though I am the least among the apostles for the things that I did, the persecution that I brought to the church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And God's grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder still because of it. And though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim it to you. And so you can believe that Jesus Christ is alive. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, often we are caught between joy and despair, between celebration and remembering those that we miss on a day like this. We yearn for the fulfillment of God's love in this life And we offer thanksgiving for God's presence that is with us as we lift our prayers for the transformation of our church and the world in which we live. Lord, we pray for those most in need. We pray that we would answer the call to love all people, to serve all people, to welcome all people, to embrace all people. Lord, you are the life giver, the pain bearer, the grace maker, and day by day you sustain us with your love. Help us to place our trust in you. Awaken us to the suffering of those around us. Save us from hiding in denials or taunts that deepen the hurt. Give us grace to share one another's burdens in humble service. Lord, we pray these things unto you, so hear our prayers. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Now we, uh, we get to the part of the service where all of our musicians and our tech people and our, everybody's like, all right, preacher, let's go. We're done with the show. We've done all the good stuff. Now let's get it going. Ray, are you hanging out in the service? Maybe? I got a story about you, so I'm really excited that you're here. I'm talking to my daughter. Sorry. You know, I, I'm actually really amazed that they kept the kids in here all the way to the end of the music. That is impressive. My son left five minutes in, but everyone else's, they did good. And it's rough. You know, I'm, I'm impressed that you're here. Look, it was just a couple months ago that, that my son was laying in bed. He's five years old. And he, he's like, why do we got to go to church all the time, Dad? And I'm like, well, it's that's my fault. Sorry about that. And I'm just like, you know what? We go to, to learn about God. And he's like, I know everything about God. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I know that God loves me. I'm like, well, that's good. And I know that God lives in my heart. And I'm like, well, that's good too. And he's like, I know that God has a hundred sheep. And I was like, does he? He's like, yes. And he loves his sheep. So... So that I don't overuse this day to try and tell you stuff that you already know. Because clearly, you probably know everything you need to know about God. Let me tell you a few stories about Jesus. Because we're here today to remember that he rose from the grave. Which is a pretty cool thing. But more than that, it's not just that act. It's who he was before he died. That's why we care about the fact that he rose from the grave. And we'll start by talking about kids. You see, Jesus, as a rabbi and prophet and leader in the first century world, was very welcoming of children. There's a story in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, where there are all these children that are being brought to Jesus because all these parents want him to bless their kids. They want him to, to, to offer a blessing. In that time, they would have laid their hands on them and offered an official blessing from God, from Yahweh. And they were bringing them, but the disciples, you know, they, they were kind of like Jesus's managers when, whenever he went into these big crowds and these big cities. And so they were kind of pushing all the kids away and, and keeping them at arm's length. And, and he told them to stop. This is what he said. He said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. It is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. It is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, about six years ago, um, we were still in Alabama and, and our daughter, uh, Reagan, who's nine now, but was, was around three back then. Um, our pastor, Robbie, was preaching at Locust Grove Baptist Church in Huntsville, Alabama. And he had all the kids come up and he was doing a children's sermon and and Robbie's a veteran. He's, he's been at that church over 30 years. And, and so he, he knew what he was doing and he knew how to, how to work the crowd and deal with the kids. And you know how it is with all the kiddos. It's chaos. Like there's, there's no controlling that moment, honestly. But I'm not sure he had ever met anyone like my daughter just yet. <laughs> and I will never forget that as he opened this little Easter egg and he was trying to have this beautiful like children's moment and talk to them about the love of God and, and all this stuff. My daughter, who has like a theater voice, if you know what I mean, spoke very loudly and said to him, and I swear unto the Lord, she said this, are you going to cut my face off and wear it? Now to clarify, back then that was the phrase she used for shaving. When she would watch me shave, she would say, why are you cutting your face off? The wearing it part, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. And there's video of this and I share it every Easter and I'll share it later today. Pastor Robbie, the veteran, 30 years in one pulpit who has seen and done everything as grandkids of his own, simply looked around at the congregation and said, well, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> the kingdom of God is for such as these, I suppose, I suppose. You know, 
Easter's a funny time. Churches are full all over the world on Easter Sunday. People come together and they visit. But also, uh, people are very migrant. They, they move around. And so, even though a church might be full, like 40% of the congregation are people that don't listen to you preach regularly. So, it's kind of funny in that way. And, and it's okay if you don't get all the traditions and understand all the things that are going on. If you didn't know all the words to the Lord's Prayer, that's fine. That's fine. Years ago, after I, I, was, I was in my mid-20s, I had a master's degree in biblical studies and a bachelor's degree in biblical languages, and I had been preaching since I was 17 years old, but uh, one, of the, one of the members of our church came up to me, and he said, hey, Rob, happy Easter, and I'm like, hey, happy Easter, and he said, he is risen, and I was like, yes, he did, and apparently you're supposed to say, he is risen indeed, and he got on to me for that, and I was like, well, where did you learn that? Where was that in seminary? They didn't teach me that. Well, it's a church tradition, things that we learn. We also learn other things in religion growing up. And some of them aren't always good. Sometimes we learn that we don't want to be a burden to others. We learn to put on a mask and to cover up who we really are as if God can't handle it. As if God isn't big enough to embrace the fullness of who you are. In the same gospel of Matthew, he says to a crowd, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you know on this Sunday morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, on this Easter morning, that you are loved and adored by God as you are, and you are not a burden to God in any way, shape, or form? You are loved as you are by the creator of the universe. There's another story that I love about Jesus that we often tell to children. We use it in Bible school or vacation Bible school or Sunday school. There's a story about Jesus as he goes into this city called Jericho. It's really close to Jerusalem. He's, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He's making the journey, the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the holy city for the season of Passover. And while he's going into Jerusalem, there's a man named Zacchaeus who was a tax collector, but not just a tax collector, a chief tax collector. The other tax collectors answered to him. He was the one in charge of them. He's trying to see, see Jesus. He can't see through the crowd. He climbs up a tree and watches, and when he's up there, Jesus looks to him and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to stay at your house today. He hurried down, and he was happy to welcome him. And all who saw it began to grumble. They didn't like that Jesus was hanging out with the tax collector. And even if you've only attended church on Christmas and Easter over the years, you know, in the first century world, tax collectors were not very popular. I don't know if you know this, but tax collectors are still not very popular. <laughs> not. It's not a popularity contest you're going to win. But especially in that time, tax collectors were co-conspirators with the oppressive empire of Rome. They worked for the people who had conquered their homeland. And they took taxes from them to give to the empire. And it's from those taxes that they paid themselves. So if your tax was this much, they'd increase it to this much. And that was their salary. If they wanted to raise that year, guess who was paying it? You were. That's how it worked. So no, he wasn't popular. But Jesus went to his house anyways. We don't know all that was talked about there. But we know that before that meal was over, that Zacchaeus was giving his wealth away. That he was just giving it away. We know that Jesus didn't tell him to, but his encounter with Jesus from Nazareth 
was so powerful and transforming that he walked out of his house and decided, I cannot live the same way that I have lived, not for a single moment. My entire life is changed. And he started giving his wealth away. And Jesus told them, all the people who would listen, salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. Sometimes in church we can learn the tradition that maybe you're too far gone for Christ. Maybe there's just too much baggage, too much history, too much stuff there. But child of God, it's just not true. It's just not true. On this Sunday morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, on this Easter Sunday, do you know that you are the beloved of God as you are here and now? Even if you're a tax collector, I may not love you a ton, but God does. <laughs> I love you plenty. God loves us. Even from our scripture reading from that beautiful letter from Paul, who admits in the letter, I was a persecutor of the church. I was a life-threatening enemy of the church, and now I serve the church. You can't be too far gone. For the God of the universe, the creator of all things, and the maker of hope loves you as you are. A third story. That happened while Jesus was going into Jericho. When he's leaving Jericho, and again, Jericho's real close to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jericho. It's like a day's travel from there. He's on his way to Jerusalem for Passover, for the Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, for the, the flipping of the tables in the temple, for the teaching, for Gethsemane, for the prayers, for the Lord's Supper, for the crucifixion, and for the resurrection. Jesus kind of has a lot going on. I don't know what the biggest day in your life was. I bet you could tell me, though. I bet you could. If I said, what was the biggest, craziest day of your life, you'd probably be able to tell me something. This was the biggest day of God's life. That's a big day. Big season. And he's leaving Jericho and all the people are screaming. They're going wild. And there are outside of the city gate, there are, are merchants that are selling things. There are uh, lots of beggars that are asking for money. There are all kinds of stuff. Travelers, other pilgrims, other Jewish pilgrims that are leaving through Jericho and headed to Jerusalem exactly where Jesus is going. They're all going that way. And while they're going out there and while there are hundreds upon hundreds of people screaming and chanting and yelling, not just for Jesus, that was happening, but also the sounds of the marketplace, the sounds of people trying to sell things to the pilgrims as they were traveling through. All through all this noise, there is a man that we know as the blind man Bartimaeus. And he's sitting at the gate and he hears the crowd and he asks someone what's going on and they're like, it's that guy, Jesus from Nazareth. He's, he's passing through on his way to Jerusalem and he starts to call out, son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples tell him to be quiet. It's one of their worst qualities. They do it a lot. They tell the children to be quiet. They tell the beggars to be quiet. They try to gatekeep those who can get to God, which I can tell you is never a good thing. But we're told that he yells all the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And one of the most profound moments in all of Scripture happens right here. We are told that Jesus stopped. He stopped. On his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the triumphal entry, on his way to the Last Supper, on his way to the cross, Jesus stopped what he was doing. 
and called for Bartimaeus. And now that he's called for him, the disciples are more than happy to help him up. Oh, come, he's, he's asking for you. Please don't tell him that we told you to be quiet. Please. They bring Bartimaeus to Jesus. And I love Jesus' question. He says, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you want? And Bartimaeus says, Lord, I, I want to see again. I want to see again. And Jesus tells him, your faith has healed you. And we're told that Bartimaeus could see and that he followed Jesus along the way. There is a myth that we can tell ourselves that surely God has bigger things to do. We don't know that as kids, but as adults, we, oh man, we latch onto that. Surely God has more important things to worry about. Meanwhile, I know children that will pray for a transformer until the end of time. And there is nothing more important than that to them. And I'm going to try real hard not to break that image of God for the kids that I encounter. Because Jesus from Nazareth, the Son of God, stopped outside of Jericho on his way to Jerusalem for someone who everyone else deemed unworthy and unimportant and unmagical. And he said, now we're going to stop for this guy because he's asked for mercy and we're going to give it. On this Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, on Easter Sunday, do you know that you are loved as you are by God, the creator of the universe, that you are adored and that you are welcomed into the kingdom? There is a darkness that tries to remove all hope but light and life and hope are found on this day. That's what being transformed is all about. The resurrection has power not just because it happened, but because so many lives were transformed by the movement and work and ministry and teachings and life and death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus the Christ. People that have been transformed by the grace of God. To be transformed is to have hope. To have hope is to have love. To be loved is to be, sh is to be sure. And, and to be a person who shares that love with all people. That's why we gather to remember who Jesus is and what Jesus is all about. I like to imagine what it was like for the disciples to go out after the resurrection and to tell the stories. We have some of those moments recorded, but of course we don't have all of them. And I like to imagine them sharing the things that Jesus taught them, said to them, that mattered the most to their hearts. I can hear the man that we call Doubting Thomas saying to them, well, Jesus is the one who said, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I can hear John saying, Jesus, the one who said, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and you will be overjoyed. James saying, Jesus, the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Simon saying, Jesus, the one who said, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come again to take you home into myself. For where I am, there you may also be. Bartholomew, the disciple whom no one here really knows, <laughs> saying, just as the Father loves me, I too love you. Remain in my love. And Peter, the one who lost the race to the tomb but went into the tomb, saying, Jesus is the one who said, don't judge others so that you won't be judged. Philip saying, Jesus is the one who said, ask and you will receive, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Joseph, telling all the people who would listen, Jesus told us to deny yourself and to take up your cross and to follow him. Mary Magdalene, telling 
all those who would listen to her about the resurrected Lord that she had seen with her own eyes, saying, Jesus told us, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, go from here to there, and it will go. Lazarus, the one who Jesus raised from the dead, sitting in a pub somewhere, talking to people, them saying, were you really dead? And him saying, yeah, I was totally dead. And he says, you know what Jesus said? He said, don't you know what God told you? That I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God isn't the God of the dead, but of the living. Zacchaeus handing out money to all who would take it, trying to right the wrongs that he had brought into the world, saying, you know, Jesus told me, love your God with everything you have and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Bartimaeus, telling people the story of how he received sight again, saying, Jesus, the one who said to the high priest, you shall see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of glory. And what about Mary, the mother of Jesus, speaking of her son and saying, you know, he once proclaimed that all authority in heaven on earth has been given to him. And he told everyone to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to love one another, never forgetting that I am with you always to the end of the age. And that, my friends, is what Easter is all about. It's about all of it. The whole story, the complete saga of divine, sacrificial, reckless love. A love that God has for you and all the people of this world. A love that is so grand and gracious that it stretches as far as the universe and as close to your own heart. A grace that is so profound that it transforms all who touch it. Be raised. Be people of light. Be loving and kind. Be patient with one another and be patient with yourself. Be humble in victory and brave in defeat. Look darkness in the face for you are light and you should not fear the darkness. You are children of light, beloved of God, saved by Christ and transformed by the grace of God and redeemed through resurrection. And so I say to you, on this Resurrection Sunday, just as Christ is, so also are you. Let the grace of God live in your soul and transform your heart. May it be so, for he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Lord, on this day, I pray that we would feel your love and that we would share your love. That's it, God. That's my prayer, that we would feel your love and that we would share your love. Help us to do that, Lord. We lift you up now. Hear our prayers. It's in your name and the resurrection and the hope and the life that we pray all these things. Amen. At this time, I'm gonna invite you to stand with me as we respond in worship with one another. You can see the words to In Christ Alone in your program. Would you please stand and sing with me?
It is great to see you on this day. Thank you for joining us for worship here at First Baptist Church of Peoria. Always wonderful to see the small army of the Crawford family in the back on Easter. Uh, If you want, they'll be playing a Crawford versus Crawford softball game later today. There's only like 75 of them back there, so they need a few uh, uh, places to play. Uh, Mark would be in for that. Softball game? Yeah, he would like that. So it is great to see you. I won't hold you here any longer. Let me pray for you as we go on this Easter Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, your children. Amen. Go in peace, my friends, and go in love.